In this video, we are going to talk about a new data structure called a binary search tree. Let us begin by looking at a problem that a binary search tree can help us to solve. This problem is the runway reservation problem. Imagine that you are in charge of an airport with a single runway. You need to schedule the landing of planes, ensuring that there is enough time in between landings to avoid collisions. Specifically, let us say that no plane should land within k minutes of each other in order to allow enough of a buffer between landings. Planes will radio in with a request for a landing time, and we need to check if that landing time is within k minutes of any other already scheduled landing time. If there is no conflict, then we schedule the plane to land at that time. Otherwise, we deny the request. Let us see an example of this procedure with k equals 3. We will simply represent landing times as integers. You can think of this integer as minutes from some time 0. As no planes can land at the same time, we will just have a set of landing times. We will have no duplicate landing times. Initially, the set is empty. Now say a request comes in to land at time 13. This has no conflict, so we schedule it and add 13 to our set of landing times. The next request asks to land at time 7. This is 6 minutes away from time 13, the only other landing time in our set, so there is no conflict and we schedule it. Next a request comes in to land at time 9, but this is just 2 minutes away from time 7 which is already in our set, so we deny this request and do not add 9 to our set of landing times. Finally, a request to land at time 22 comes in. This has no conflict, and therefore we can also add it to our set. Now let us try to abstract out the key properties we need in a data structure in order to answer requests for landing times. We want to maintain a set of landing times. Given a request to land at time t, we want to be able to quickly check if there is any other time in the set that is within k minutes of t. If the request passes this check, then we want to add time t to our data structure. We also want to be able to remove landing times from our data structure. For example, once a plane lands, we no longer need to store its landing time. So we want a data structure that allows fast insertion, deletion, and checking if there is already a key in the database that is too close to a given key. What is a good data structure to do this? Let us go through some examples of data structures we have seen so far. First, let us say that we just maintain landing times in a vector. We do not keep this vector sorted. When a new landing time comes in, if it does not conflict with an existing landing time, then we simply push back the time to the end of our vector. What is the cost of insertion in this solution? Well, insertion is OK. That's just constant time. We're just pushing back to the end of a vector. How about verifying that the constraint is satisfied? This is slow. To do this, we have to step through each element of the vector one by one to verify that the requested landing time is not too close to an already scheduled landing time. If there are n elements in our vector, then this will take time theta of n. We will take at least time n in the worst case because we have to check all n elements of our vector. Thus, this is not a very good solution. What if we still have a vector, but we maintain the landing times in sorted order? Now when we want to check if we can schedule landing time t, we can use binary search to find the closest times to t in the vector. This just takes time theta of log n when there are n landing times in the vector. So we can verify whether or not the constraint is satisfied fairly quickly. But is there still a problem with this solution? Well, when we want to actually insert a new time into the middle of the vector, 
we are going to have to shift all the landing times to the right of it over one position. Inserting into the middle of a vector is slow. This can take time, a constant times n, when there are n elements in the vector. So this is not a very good solution either. Now let's try something else. How about if we maintain a sorted linked list? Now it is fast to insert an element in the middle of the list. This can be done with just a constant number of pointer updates. What is the problem with this solution? The problem now is that we can no longer do binary search. We don't have random access to the elements of the linked list, so we cannot quickly jump around as needed to do binary search in time order log n. Checking the constraint becomes time theta of n in this case, as again, we potentially have to walk through the entire list from the start to the end in order to check the constraint. Thus, this is not a very good solution either. If the runway reservation problem made you think of the standard library containers of set or map, then you are exactly right. These data structures are ideal for this problem. Today, we will look behind the scenes at how set and map are typically implemented with balanced binary search trees. Binary search trees combine the benefits of being able to do binary search like an assorted vector and being able to easily insert like in a linked list. Now let us formalize the runway reservation problem so we can see exactly what operations we need our data structure to support. This will let us develop an abstract, abstract data type to solve the problem. Exactly what data the data structure will hold and the set of operations that can be performed on this data. The data structure will be organized around the landing times and we think of the landing times as being keys. Each key can be associated with some data. For example, this might be the flight number, the type of plane, etc., that is requesting the landing time. However, as far as the operation of the data structure is concerned, it is only the key values that matter. The data associated with a key is just carried around as a payload. We want to support two operations that change the content of our database. We can insert a new key in its associated record, and we can remove an element with a given key. We also want to support operations to extract information from the database. This will allow us to check if the constraint, this will allow us to, to check the constraint if there is already a landing time in the database that is too near a requested landing time. The contains function checks if a key is already in the database. The successor function, given a key t, finds the minimum key in the database that is larger than t. Likewise, the predecessor function, given a key t, finds the maximum key in the database that is smaller than t. For both the predecessor and the successor functions, we assume that the key argument is already present in the database. This, of course, can be checked with the contains function. Here is how we can solve the runway reservation problem via this abstract data type. When a request for landing time t comes in, we first check if the database already contains t using the contains function. If yes, then we reject the request. Obviously, we cannot have two planes landing at the same time on our single runway. If not, then we insert t and its associated data into the database. We then find the predecessor and successor of t. If t is at least k minutes from its successor and predecessor, then we are done. Otherwise, there is a conflict, and we remove t from the database and reject the landing time request. This is a slightly roundabout solution to the runway reservation problem, but we do it this way to keep our abstract data type general and elegant.